Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. Today we're going to be focusing on the bane of anglers' lives. We're going to be looking at tangles, twists, coils and frap-ups. We're going to be going through a load of tips. I really hope these help you get the best out of your carp fishing. To start with, let's look at tangles. Now this is the bane of anglers' lives. If your rig's tangled, your chances of catching a carp are a bit limited. The thing to understand is that the further you're trying to cast, the greater the risk of a tangle is. So for long range, we really have to have super solid, very robust, simple rigs that are virtually impossible to tangle. If you're fishing short to medium range, you might say, I never have a tangle. But when you have to break new ground, go to a new water, fish a bigger venue, all of a sudden you find yourself having to cast further and out of the blue, you're suffering tangles. So I'm going to try and show you why it happens and more importantly, what we need to do to eliminate them. So for this section, I'm going to keep the lead system very simple, the lead clip. I hardly ever use lead clips in my fishing, but I just wanted to use something that everyone's familiar with. One of the most tangle prone materials that we can use as a hook link is braid. Now I love a bit of braid in the right situation, but braid in the wrong hands or in the wrong situation can be a bit of a mare. So that's a long braided rig. Let's have a few casts with that and see how we get on. So to start with, I'm just going to lob this out 40, 50 yards, feather it down a little and see how it goes. I feathered it down and just before it hit the water, I just trapped the line and I kept it on a tight line, felt a nice thud on a hard water spot that's out there. Let's wind him in and have a look. So there we go, 45, 50 yards, something like that, little feathered cast. Trap the lead, felt the donk, supple braided rig, no problem. Let's try it again, same distance, but I'm just going to kind of fire it in the water. Bit of a miscast if you like. Well, there we go, as you can see I paid no attention to where that was going whatsoever. Just kind of fired it in, let's see what happened. The main rig is tangle free, but the hair has wrapped around the hook. It's not a disaster, but it's certainly not how we intended that rig to fish. Let's try and push this rig a bit farther, give it a bit of a thump. I'm not going to feather it down, I'm just going to fire it in. I did a bit of feathering there just out of nervousness. It was going a bit well, I didn't want to put it on the damn wall. But I stopped feathering when I was confident that it was actually going to land in the water. So that's about 90 yards, something like that. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. So this is why fishing long braided rigs at range is an absolute no. There is no way that that is going to catch anything. So that was a disaster. Let's have another go, but this time I'm going to try and cast roughly the same range feather it down, stop the lead before it hits the water and see how that goes. Right, that was about 15 yards short, but I feathered it, I stopped it, we got a big wind on today. But let's see how it landed anyway. There we go, perfect. So the best way to stop tangles is to feather the lead and then trap it before it hits the water or fish to a clip. The further out you go, the more you've got to decelerate that lead before it hits the water. Now, yes, this is going to cut down range, but if you're fishing with supple rigs like this, then it's absolutely essential. So fishing clipped up or feathering the lead down is a really great way of eliminating tangles. But there are a few other tricks that we can do as well. One popular way of doing it 
is to add a bit of PVA. Let's have a look at a couple of PVA options. So we've got a little sausage as I call them, which is just a, a five bait stringer and some PVA mesh. And then we've got the old obligatory PVA crumb stick. Let's clip the stringer on. So same rig, supple braided rig, which we know is very prone to tangles. All we've done is add a five bait stringer and I'm going to cast it out there, but I'm not going to feather it. I'm not going to try and land the lead. Let's see if the addition of the stringer can sort it out and land it neat. Right, skied that one a bit. Terrible cast really, but let's see if it actually landed. Well, there we go. We've still got the PVA on the, uh, on the hook there from the, from the mesh, but that rig landed absolutely tangle free. The cast was rubbish, but the rig was fishing. And that's all thanks to that little addition of that PVA stack of baits. For this next cast, I'm going to put on an anti-tangle sleeve. Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking that an anti-tangle sleeve is going to sort it all out, and no matter how you cast, or whether you put PVA or not, it's going to make it okay. Well, let's have a look. So there we go, anti-tangle sleeves, maybe not the magic bullet that you think they are. What a mess. Now I still use anti-tangle sleeves, but I don't think there's much point in putting an anti-tangle sleeve on a supple braided rig like this. If I was fishing a coated hook link, or more commonly, just a straightforward piece of mono, then yes, at max range, the addition of an anti-tangle sleeve can be a real help. But just bolting one on to a supple braided rig, lobbing it out there and expect it to be fishing for you, well, it might not be every time. So for me, the best way of avoiding tangles is use stiff materials. I use an awful lot of mono in my fishing, 0 0.40, 0.45 something like that naturally anti-tangle and very robust fish to a clip or at least feather the lead and land the rig properly that's number one the addition of a little bit of pva can really help as well anti-tangle sleeves they do have a role to play in absolutely extreme distances when combined with mono etc but they're not the cure-all that you might think Let's have a look at a problem that plagues all anglers, and that's the dreaded line twist. To start, how do we know that our line is twisted? Let's have a look. I've just pulled some main line off my uh, reel here, and if I bring these bits of main line together, you'll see that they instantly twist up and tangle horribly. That is what line twist looks like. So if you're having problems and your line is doing that, then you've definitely got line twist. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So we can see we've got a few uh, few curls in it and stuff, but uh, when we bring it together, it doesn't spiral together. Yeah, so that's, that's not twisted. That's perfectly fishable with. Right, let's set about sorting this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off this rig, then I'm going to unpin the lead clip from the swivel. Then we can pull the swivel out from the tubing and then cut the swivel off the main line. Then I'm going to pull the lead clip off the tubing and then I'm going to slide the lead off. So all we're left with is the main line and the tubing. Then I'm going to take that swivel back again cut the tag end off and I'm going to rejoin the swivel to the main line with the tucked blood. Cut the tag end off. So that leaves us a swivel and the tubing and the main line knot. Then all we need is some PVA mesh and some stones. So ideally you need one of the PVA systems with a larger diameter. This is the original funnel web from Corda but to be honest any PVA mesh will do. 
Then all we need is some stones. I'm surrounded by gravel here. A small handful is all you need. If you've got lightweight rods, use less stones. I've got quite powerful rods, so I can cast a decent amount of stones like this. Make sure that the stones are dry. We just pop them in the system there. Pay a bit off. And tie a big overhand loop. To control where you knot PVA, if you put a big loop in there with your fingers and then just pull like that, That'll slide the knot down. Now to keep that knot in place, all you've got to do is hold the knot. I'm then going to tie another knot, but I'm going to tie it up there, about 10 centimetres out of the way. And again, I just hold the knot and pull like that, and it fixes the position of the knot. Then we just cut below that top knot. So we've got a little bag of stones and enough material to tie an overhand knot. So we take our ring swivel, which is on the end of the rig tubing, take our PVA stocking, and just pass the top of that stocking through the big eye of the swivel. If you're having difficulty doing that, then just use a baiting needle to thread that through. Then all we've got to do is tie an overhand knot to join the two together. And again, we're just going to pull that down like that so it's nice and neat. Give that a little pull. If that's slipping, do another overhand knot. So it's nice and secure like that. Then we can just cut the tag end. So we're all ready to go. Just make sure that you haven't got any mainline wrapped around your mainline clip on the reel. To get the best out of this method, what you need to do is cast this bag of stones as far as you can comfortably do so. Ideally, farther than the range you're actually fishing. Now, if you're fishing really long range, you're probably not going to be able to achieve that. But just get it out there as far as you can. I'm going to aim this at the far corner because then I can get the maximum range. As always, I'm going to wet the spool to make sure that the line comes off neatly. Never dunk it, always splash it. All right, here we go. Now it's only going to take seconds for that PVA bag to melt. The stones are going to drop to the bottom and all I'm going to wind in is the tubing and the swivel. In doing that, the line is free to untwist on the way in. In order to put a bit of tension on the line when I'm winding back in, I'm just going to hold the line between my fingers. Right, it's winding back in. Every few seconds, you dip the tip in the water. It'll keep the line lubricated. It'll stop your fingers burning as well. So there we go, that should be untwisted. Right, let's have a look at how we did. Yeah, one little twist in there. That's absolutely fine. You'll never get it perfect, but if you do this routinely in your fishing, it's a real quick fix to stop line twist building up. If your line twist is really bad, then you can try the walking out method. Sometimes it's that bad, you're just gonna to have to re-spool. I wanna give a big shout out to the guy that very kindly commented on my mainline video and made this suggestion. I've incorporated it into my fishing and it works, it's great. So give it a go, it's a real quick fix. While we're on the subject of line twist, a couple of years ago, I changed the way I fish. Up until a couple of years ago, I always played fish on the clutch. I soon realized that line coming off the clutch when you're playing fish is one of the big causes of line twist. I decided to change to back winding. 
and it's made a massive difference to the amount of line twist that I have when I'm fishing. If you're one of these anglers that fishes with a loose clutch and lets the fish take a truckload of line off the clutch, then you're gonna suffer bad line twist all the time, which can really hamper your angling. It can certainly make fishing at range harder and harder. If you swap to back winding, it'll put you in more direct control of the fish. You won't have to play tunes on the clutch and I like it, I prefer it. So if you're having problems with line twist, give back winding a go, it works for me. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is coily line. Now coily line is different to twisted line. Coily line will cut down your casting distance and it will sound rattly when it's going through the rings. The reason for coily line is dryness. The thing to understand is that monofilament is basically made of nylon with some additives in it. Nylon is hydroscopic. That's a fancy way of saying that it absorbs moisture. Now, it doesn't absorb moisture like a sponge. It takes time for the moisture to go into it. Over time, in dry weather, nylon loses the moisture. And when it loses the moisture, it changes the molecular structure of the material. We see this as coils. So all we have to do to fix coiliness is to keep the line wet. Now, in rainy weather, like we got now, that's not too tricky. Or when we've got our lines in the water all the time. The line's wet, therefore it stays coil free. In the summer months and short session carping, coiliness can be a big problem. There are a couple of ways to cure this. So the line's only gonna get coily when it's standing up against your bivvy like this. If you're resting your swim like I am at the moment, then you can regularly pour water over the spool to keep it hydrated. Or you could just order some rain. Another way of doing this is you can put a damp cloth over the spool. I've also found a little trick with some sweat bands. And if you dunk sweat bands in the lake, wrap them over the spool, that'll keep the moisture in the line. And when you're ready to put your lines out, they'll be coil free, cast beautifully, and hang limply through the rings. So that's how you fix coils. So let's have a talk about frap ups or wind knots. So these occur when too many coils of line come off the spool at the same time. We get a looping up effect and these loops can sometimes catch around the butt ring and if you're casting really hard you can actually literally rip the rod ring off or just break the line. So there's various things that you can do to make sure that you don't experience frap ups on a regular basis. Let's have a look at that now. So the number one cause of frap ups has got to be an overfilled spool. It's really important to fill the spool to the right level. If you don't put enough line on the spool, it's going to cost you distance. And if you're trying to do maximum range with minimal effort, this really matters. But if you overdo it, if you put too much line on the spool, you're going to run the risk of frap ups. So what level should we be looking for when we're filling the spool? In order to check line fill level, I just use my finger as a ruler, basically. I touch it on the tip, I touch it on the spool. I'm also touching the coils of line at the same time, but they're not pushing my finger away like that, then that's absolutely perfect. If I'm brushing the lip and just brushing the widest diameter coils there, that's spot on. Not too little, not too much. So I've had a few of you guys comment, Matt, why do you splash water on the spool before you cast? Well, it's all about preventing frap ups. Every time I cast, I dip the rings and splash water on the spool. 
The water's doing a couple of things. On the spool, it's helping prevent too many coils of line coming off at one time, which is the root cause of a frap up. Also, it's acting as a lubricant on the lip of the spool. So that as it comes off, there's a minimum amount of force holding it back. Now, as we know, nylon is hydroscopic. It also just helps rehydrate the line just that one last time before we make that big cast. Whenever I want to splash water on my spool, I'm really careful not to dunk or immerse the whole reel in the water. Now, these are top end reels. They're sealed against moisture and dust, but there's no need to test this feature every time I cast. On unsealed reels, it's really important to keep them dry. Otherwise, you're gonna be taking your reels for repair every couple of years and have expensive service bills. So frap ups can be quite dangerous. If you're on a big water with yachts or sailboards or whatever, they can certainly be at risk. On a small water, pedestrians or other anglers opposite you are also at risk. Frap ups also pose a risk to our equipment. I've seen rod rings ripped off. I've even seen the tip section of a rod ripped clean off when things went wrong. Something I do before every single cast is make sure that the line isn't tangled around the tip ring. So as soon as I take the line in my index finger there and open up the bail arm, what I do, I just take the line here and I just gently pull it up and down a few times. If it's easy to pull, then I know that that line isn't wrapped around the tip. When I swing the rod into a rearward position just before the cast, if I'm listening for any kind of funny noises, if I hear a bit of a click, it's possible that the line may have flipped around the tip and in that case, I'll double check it with a little tweak on my finger just before I make the cast. I'll show you what I mean. So we check the line there, into the rear position. I didn't hear a click. I'm just gonna give my finger just a little tweak there. If it moves freely, then I know that that line is gonna come off the spool nicely. Right, let's give this a smack. That's fine. Little tweak of the index finger. Uh, let's give it a thump. Lovely. So that's how you fix wrap ups. Before we go fishing and during a session, it's really important to make sure that the main line remains damage free. So it's a really good idea to regularly check it. To check for damage, all I'm going to do is run the main line through my fingers. So I'm just going to start at the reel here and pass the line up and I'm just feeling for any little imperfections and then down from the tip uh, no, I don't like that. I can, I can see actually with my naked eye that there's been a bit of damage on this line. If you feel something like this, if you can see damage, then it's obviously damage. Sometimes it can be a bit of algae or a bit of weed stuck on the line and it's actually nothing. So what you can do, just wet your fingers and run it back and forth over the line and you, you clean it off basically. And... If you can still feel the damage, then what I would do is I would get an eyeglass and actually inspect to see that it's definitely damaged, not a piece of rubbish. Yeah, a couple of bits of damage. I think what's happened actually is that uh, the line looks to have been pinched. I think I might have accidentally stepped on the line when I was doing my prep yesterday. The damage isn't bad, but 
I don't like it, it's a potential weak point and it needs to be cut out. Let's check the rest of the main line to make sure that I haven't cut a, cut a load off. There's no need to go overboard here. I've only been fishing about 50 yards, so if I check the first 60 yards, then everything should be fine. 60 yards, we'll call that about 16 wraps, something like that. 16, 17, that'll do. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wind that back on now, and I'm gonna wind the line through my fingers, and if I feel anything, I'll stop go back and double check it. They go nice and slowly. Oh, was that something there? No, that was just a bit of smeg, that. Right, let's continue. So there we go, that's all checked out. I've still got this bit of damage above the tubing here, so all I'm going to do is slide the tubing up, cut the line, rejoin the swivel, and we're good to go again. So I hope you found those tips useful. These are things that I incorporate every day into my fishing. As always, if you've got any comments or questions, do drop me a line. I do try and respond to them all.